There's so much travel information available online these days, it can be dizzying to know where to start. So sometimes I like to get a feel for the place through talking to locals. This week I'm traveling around the Republic of Ireland and my first stop is Barrow House in Kerry. The owner, Dara McDonough, lived in London for 30 years but was tempted back to Ireland to renovate and run this beautiful Georgian guest house. So what made you want to move back to this part of the world? It was the draw of the house. My brother rang me and said that he had found my unicorn, which is a house like this. We're very inspired by Kerry. We're very inspired by the wild food foraging potential. Right off the wall here, we have guys who are periwinkling, choosing and finding seafood every day. That makes its way into our menus. Do you have a favorite spot around here? Yeah, I mean, Barrow Beach, which is behind us, is walkable. It's a stunning beach with powerful waves, beautiful for surfing. And I think I like it because it's so undiscovered. So, what do you suggest that I do while I'm here? I really suggest that you get involved in the wild food foraging that's happening here. In fact, I'm going to send you off with Gurkha, and he's going to show you all the amazing things, the edible foods that are even on our driveway. Gorka Arietta is the head chef in a seafood restaurant in Barrow, and cooking with local seasonal ingredients is really important to him. There is a, there is a Spanish uh, chef uh -huh. that uses these as capers. Oh, right. So, what ingredients do you find on the waterbed here? Well, this, this area around Barrow is well known as our garden, our sea garden. It's just a pleasure to come on a day like this and search new things, taste, might clear your head on a, of the busy, stressful life. These days, everything is globalized and everything is in supermarkets, but food is, is in the nature. As I'm down at Barrow Beach, Dara told me to seek out Eugene Farrelly, a champion angler who has been fishing in the area for 30 years. So tell me, what kind of sea life, what kind of fish do we have here? Well, obviously we've seen the bass earlier, but we have turbot, we've got flounder, we've got plaice. As we go further into the bay, we've got stingray, undulate rays. We've got a great variety of fish here. Probably the most unique place in the British Isles for rare fish. And what's the best time of the day to go fishing? Early morning or the witching hour, the only problem, the witching hour affects going to the pub, <laughs> um, which is also very important here in Ireland. Are there any kind of hidden gems or favourite spots that you have around this part of the coast? There's places here that have never been fished by anglers. We kind of like to keep our own little secrets, bring the odd friend, obviously put a blindfold on them so they can't bring people down there. Keep it to yourself, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. This morning I'm setting off to Lismore, I'm really excited to meet fellow travel writer Dervla Murphy. She's explored so much of the world, so I'm keen to see where her journey started. You've obviously travelled around the world. What's brought you back to Lismore? Well, it's just where I was born, it's where I belong. Yeah. And never wanted to live anywhere else. For obvious reasons, if you've looked around the area, you're not going to find anywhere. More beautiful, really. Do you feel like the way that people travel now has changed since when you well, first started? Well, of traveling? course, the people now, youngsters, seem to feel they have to take all these damn gadgets with them. Laptops and... Mobile phones yeah. and all the rest of it. Yeah, so you'd rather travel off-grid? Just maybe have a, a guidebook? Totally, absolutely. So Dervla has travelled all across the world in the 60s, she cycled from Ireland to India, but I can see why she came back to Lismore. There's something really special about this place. Next stop for me is Waterford, Ireland's oldest city, and I've got local Tony Hayes to tell me a bit about the famous glass making industry here. So can you tell me, what, what do you guys do here? Oh, well, we make glass, uh, lots of it. Uh, we specialise in, in colour glass. It's all handmade, it's, um, it's, it's what we've been doing all our lives. The tools we use are tools that have been around for thousands of years. How did you actually learn how to become a glass blower? We're all ex for crystal workers and when the company ceased manufacturing here in Ireland, uh, we decided to set up our own company. What would you recommend that we do here in Waterford? Uh, a local uh, group got together about five or six years ago and formed a company called Waterford Walls and they bring international artists from all over the world to paint walls, it just brightens the place up. So Tony told me about the street art in the town and I found myself some expert tour guides. 
I'm with Gabe and Adele from The Walls Project and we're here in a beautiful sunny Waterford. So, can you tell me, what do you do here in Waterford? Every year we put on Waterford Walls, which is an international street art festival. In 2018 we brought 50 artists, both national, Irish and international, uh, to Waterford to paint our city's walls. So this one behind us here is Mr. Sens from the UK. It's a very original style and uh, personally I'm absolutely delighted to have it here. So after Waterford we're heading up to Dublin. Where would you recommend that we stop along the way? Uh, I'm from Kilkenny so you should definitely take a look in there and see what's going on. Lots of pubs, lots of live music, uh, lots of things to do and quite a nice town as well to see. I'm listening to Irish music and eating an Irish stew. I've either become a stereotypical tourist or I'm well and truly a local. This morning I'm heading up to meet Dubliner Paul Stenson, owner of the White Moose Cafe. He went viral in early 2018 for his online spat with the British influencer L Darby. We got in contact and now I'm off to have a coffee with him at his cafe. Don't worry Paul, I'm paying. Your sense of humour is kind of everywhere. You can see it on the signs outside, on the murals. But is that something that you think people respond well to? It is, because it, 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 people can relate to it. So they come in support of what I do. Now, like the, the signs aren't in any way overly offensive, really. They're just funny. It is a backlash against the cripplingly PC world we live in these days where you're not allowed to say anything. Honesty is not allowed, but we make honesty our USP. How do you think social media has changed the way that people travel? The reason our cafe downstairs is, is full at the moment is purely on the basis of our social media presence. Like we're off the beaten track here, so we rely on people traveling to come here. Do you have any recommendations for things that we have to do here in Dublin? If you're looking for a pint of Guinness, well then, you go somewhere like the Cobblestone Bar, in, in Smithfield where they do live music. So I couldn't leave Dublin without having a pint of Guinness and Paul recommended that I come here to the Cobblestone which is the perfect way to finish my trip around Ireland. <laughs> 